Beyond Meat and the Impossible Burger absolutely blew up in 2019. The Beyond stocks were beyond hot. There's a general idea that these imitation meats must be healthier because they're made from plants. But does that really pan out? Let's find out. Even if you've been living under a rock, you've heard of Beyond Meats and the Impossible Burger. Some people prefer them for ethical reasons. For others, it's the environment. A study from the University of Michigan concluded the Beyond Burger generates 90% less greenhouse gas emissions than beef, it requires less energy, less than 1% of the water, and 93% less land. So those are pretty impressive numbers. But it's good to keep in mind funding and conflicts of interest, as I've said in previous videos. So we got to be fair here as well. This study was commissioned by Beyond Meats, so we can take the numbers with a grain of salt. But we do know from extensive independent research that red meat is far more resource intensive and polluting than vegetables. According to this recent study, red meat has an environmental impact 10 to 100 times larger than plant foods. So it's not a hard sell that plant burgers are easier on the environment than beef. But the third reason people are excited about the Beyond and the Impossible Burger is the health angle. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Only because it's my background. Since they're made from plants, they must be healthier, right? Or are they? As far as their effect on blood markers and disease risks, we have no data. Compared to beef, where we have hundreds if not thousands of studies, short-term, long-term, mechanistic, observational, interventional, you name it. The preponderance of the evidence, the whole of the evidence, consistently points to red flags, which is why the recommendations are to go easy on red meat. So we have lots of studies on beef. What about the beyond and the impossible? I can tell you studies on their health effects are underway as we speak, and as soon as results are available, I'll update everybody. So what all these blogs have been doing with the head-to-head -head comparison, beef versus imitation meats, is comparing nutrient composition. It's basically an educated guess. They're speculating as to what the health effects might be. We'll take a look at the head-to-head -head analysis, and we'll address the question everybody's asking, are the imitations better or worse than beef? And after that, we'll talk about why that's not a great question to ask in the first place. Let's do it. Same size for all patties, four ounces. For beef, I'm looking at official USDA numbers, but bear in mind, exact values vary depending on how lean the cut is. Whereas the imitations are always the same, it's a standard product. So, calories. The impossible and the beyond are around the same, about 250 calories. Beef, 205 to 290. Again, varies depending how lean the meat is, but similar ballpark as the fake meats. Protein, 19 grams for the impossible, 20 grams for beyond. Beef, most of the comparisons quote about 16 or 17, but I found cuts going all the way to 28 grams. So significant variation, but same general ballpark. Maybe a little bit less or a bit more depending where you get your burger. Let's look at fats. Saturated fat, eight grams for the impossible, six grams for beyond, and about six for beef, give or take. So again, similar range. Wait, how's that possible? Isn't saturated fat supposed to be a meat and butter thing? It is usually concentrated in animal products, yes but some oils have a ton of it as well. And that's where this is coming from. The imitations have coconut oil, which we know raises our serum cholesterol. I've covered that before. And this large study just came out confirming it. So this is something that confuses a lot of people. If you have cholesterol issues, cutting back on meat helps, sure. But if you replace it with coconut oil or a processed food that has a lot of it, you might not see a benefit. It's worth emphasizing this. Otherwise people go, oh, I had high cholesterol and I stopped eating steaks. I even bought these plant burgers and my cholesterol is still too high. So I guess the steaks weren't the problem at all. And maybe food doesn't matter whatsoever. No, food matters immensely. It's just you jump from the pan to the fire. None of those options are great for cholesterol levels, unfortunately. All right, moving on. Trans fats, zero in the imitations, about half a gram to a gram for beef. Cholesterol, of course, zero in the imitations. Plants don't have cholesterol. And 60 to 100 milligrams in beef. Fiber, of course, none in beef. Only plants have fiber. Imitations, three and two grams. Not a ton, but some. And sodium, this made the headlines, 370 and 390 milligrams and much lower in beef. Bear in mind though, this is if you're eating just the patty and cooking it at home, like everything controlled. If you're having it at a restaurant with added salt during cooking and the bun and the toppings and the sauces and God knows whatever else, the sodium skyrockets. Almost a thousand milligrams for some commercial burgers. So it eclipses the sodium in the impossible or the beyond. There are many other nutrients, of course. For example, one difference between the two imitation burgers is that in the impossible, they added B12. Another thing that made the headlines is iron. But what's interesting here is not the amount, it's the type. In meat, about 40% of the iron is heme iron. 
and this is thought to be one of the health concerns of red meat. I've made videos on that. In the Impossible, they also decided to add some heme iron, but grown in the lab from plant origin. It's called leg hemoglobin from legume. We don't have a lot of data on that, so we don't know if it's less problematic than the animal heme, but yeah, it's a concern. The Beyond, on the other hand, doesn't have any heme iron. Another concern some people have is soy. The Impossible Burger has it, the Beyond doesn't. I'm actually making a whole video all on soy because a lot of people are concerned and confused. Is it good? Is it bad? Does it give you man boobs? So, in-depth soy video coming soon. We could also talk about things like antibiotics, animal hormones, antioxidants, and in those categories, the beef is naturally going to look a little worse. Although the antibiotics vary, the vast majority of burgers sold are from factory farm meat. So they're going to have antibiotics. But if it's a fancy burger or homemade from like a super high quality meat or something, maybe not. But we can't get away from the natural animal hormones in beef, as well as the very low amounts of antioxidants compared to plants. On the other hand, with the imitations, people are worried about artificial components since it's not a natural food. You are fake news. Like any processed food, they have artificial components in artificial combinations. And that's always a legitimate red flag. It's never the same as eating an actual plant as grown. So that's the gist of the face-to-face -face comparison. As you can see, it's not a slam dunk. It's not like one option crushes the others. Let me know if you disagree. If you think one of these options is a landslide. For environment and other issues, sure. But for health, none of these seems like a great option to be completely honest. If you're worried about sodium or artificial ingredients, the imitations don't look good. If you're worried about cholesterol, trans fats, and animal hormones, beef doesn't look good. And if you're worried about saturated fat, none of them look good. So it's a bit of a Sophie's choice. And this is the main point of this video, that this type of one-to-one -one comparison we see everywhere is a little short-sighted. Because call me crazy, but this doesn't sound like the ideal decision-making process to decide what foods to feed our bodies. Should I have a boatload of sodium for dinner or a bunch of cholesterol and animal hormones? Hmm. I mean, shouldn't we be shooting for ideal foods? Things that are gonna make us stronger and healthier and sharper every day and not split hairs between something that might hurt me and something that might hurt me a little bit less, maybe? Don't get me wrong. I am not saying that nobody should ever go near one of these things. I'm not against having a sugary snack once in a while or go out with our friends, have a few drinks, or a million other things that we know are not health promoting in and of themselves. In fact, I don't think that obsessing over food and trying to be perfect is very productive. And I've said exactly that in previous videos, and I've suggested that people not do it as a dietary strategy. So if you have a craving once in a while and you need to have a burger, I say do it. If it helps you maintain consistency of a healthy diet overall, it's probably not a huge deal health-wise. If you're deciding based on environment, you're probably going to go for the imitations. If you're trying to cut back on salt, or if you prefer the meat, it's probably the meat for you. The key takeaway from this video is that based on what we know about nutrition science at this point in time, these are occasional treats, not staple meals. And I'm talking about all three here. Health-wise, we don't know for sure which one is better. That's the truth. And based on the information we do have, replacing animal products with processed plant foods does not improve our disease risk. And here's the truth. This issue is much broader than just the red meat question. You could say the stakes are much higher. Because you and I both know this is gonna keep coming up. These companies are gonna keep churning out great imitations. It's gonna be the impossible bacon that tastes just like bacon but no pig was hurt, and the Beyond Egg that didn't come from a chicken, and eventually they're gonna figure out how to make fake cheese that actually tastes like real cheese. Unlike Daya, which actually brings together vegans and meat eaters because everybody seems to hate it. And every time one of these creations comes out, it's going to be a big media hype and a big debate. Which one is healthier, the animal one or the processed one? And these products will probably be a godsend for the environment and for ethics and for people trying to cut back on red meat. Yeah, they can be helpful as training wheels, but let's not fool ourselves that it's just like eating a salad. Until we have actual data on health outcomes, the truth is we don't know. And this type of comparison with lists of nutrients is an okay placeholder, but for the time being, we have no reason to say that these foods are healthier than the originals. They could turn out to be, or they could be worse. Only actual data will tell. What we already know about healthy diet from nutrition science is that it's a pattern with lots of fruits and vegetables and plant sources of protein like beans and nuts with some white meat and fish if you want to include animal products and otherwise low in red meat and processed food. So which one is the best burger? Nutritionally, this one. Homemade black bean burger. 
So as far as staple meal, that one takes the prize. And as far as occasional treat, whichever one scratches your itch, I guess. If you thought that video was useful, consider sharing with others who might be interested and hit that like button and subscribe for more nutrition made simple. Also feel free to link up with me on my Facebook page and on Twitter for more in-depth nutrition science. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.